Well guys, the time has come. You know, I know Alan Jackson has said country music is gone. Loretta Lynn has said country music is dead. Kelly Clarkson has even asked, What is country music? What's the sound we like again? And as a community, we have endured such atrocities as the Property Brothers getting into country music. We can do what we want to do. Hey, come on, you know you want to. The formation of Uncle Ezra Ray. It's a brilliant, fun summer song. Just don't think about it. Have fun. BYHB. And the entire Graffiti U era from Keith Urban. The place that I know, that they all know me, I gotta get it back. But all of those pale in comparison to what we have to talk about today, and that is the worst country song of all time. And actually, that's just the name of the song. There is a new song by Toby Keith, Hardy, and Brantley Gilbert that is called The Worst Country Song of All Time. A bunch of guys wanted me to cover this, and when it dropped, I was on vacation, and then I got caught up in the move. But I wanted to visit the song because if you are gonna create a song with that clickbaity of a title, I am gonna use that title as clickbait. This is the sacred law of internet traffic. But I'm not only gonna talk about that song, I'm also gonna cover in this video, Walker Hayes' smash hit, Fancy Like, and then this new one from Trace Adkins, Luke Bryan, and Pitbull called Where the Country Girls At. Because in the past month, I've probably gotten 20 versions of this joke sent to me where someone's like, I think this is actually the worst country song of all time. So I figured why not get all three of these songs that have everybody all pissed off, listen to them and just, I don't know, see what there is to say about them. Also, I am wearing some of my new merch. Thank you so much for supporting it. We're already like 25% of the way through the stock in the first 48 hours, which feels great. I'm wearing the somewhat apologetically suburban as hell shirt since I'm talking about a Hardy song in this video. And um, you can pick this up along with all the others at gradysmithshop.com. Thank you so much for supporting. All right, first up, let's listen to a worst country song of all time. This is written by Will Weatherly, Brantley Gilbert, Hunter Phelps, and Michael Wilson Hardy. It's Brantley Gilbert's lead single off his new album. They're even sending it to radio. Um, and let's just give it a listen. This is the worst country song of all time. <laughs> the sax solo is what's happening right now. Okay, I'm gonna be honest, I was really hoping that that song was going to be more of a protest about kind of like country music and not so much kind of like planting a flag for like the country lifestyle and kind of being against the city folk because I've always disliked that side of Brantley Gilbert, the kind of small town throwdown side of him. I just think it's kind of pandering and ultimately everyone has like a lot more in common than we have that separates us. And I just think it's a cheaper shot to think about what separates us. That said, I did laugh a few times. Like I did laugh a few times. Like that's the beauty of humor is you can say somewhat provocative, fairly mean things. Um, and it goes down easy when it's a joke. I mean, I feel the same way in the opposite political direction about songs like uh, Good Old Boys Club by Casey Musgraves, where she's like, I don't want any part of songs like this. And basically the whole song is working with this gimmick of naming things that would be very uncountry, that would never appear in a country song, like I Love Cities and Traffic Jams, or I Don't Want a House on a Piece of Land. Um, I think we should change the American flag, getting a little bit political. Hardy's verse is definitely the most political here. It kind of references cancel culture. I support Kim Jong-un and Putin. I did laugh really hard at the saxophone solo just because I wasn't expecting it and it's so stupid and they say that the song is a joke. So, you know, I don't want to get too anthropological and be like, what does this mean about the state of discourse in our society? It's like, look, people are mad, people are divided and I do not think songs like this are necessarily the solution, but I do think they're interesting. I mean, obviously there's an anger that conservatives feel toward liberals, liberals feel toward conservatives at this moment, and songs like this and that new one from Aaron Lewis, you know, they make that clear. But they say the song's a joke, and I'm fine with the song being a joke. I just think it's like a little bit pandering. I think at the end of the day, it is a checklist song. I found it amusing, but it is not kind of like the statement. I was expecting. And the sound of it is not something that feels rebellious at all to me. It does sound just super, super radio friendly, extremely percussive. It's not like it's doubled down on super country instrumentation. Um, kind of reminds me of Walker Hayes' 90s country in that way, where it's a song that's referencing this great era of country music that's not musically referencing that great era. So I don't know what I'd give that, like a five out of 10? Like I didn't dislike it, but I also didn't like it that much. It's just sort of amusing. In some ways it's making a huge statement, but then you think about like, 
who's singing it and the fact that this is a big like radio pushed single and it takes away some of that kind of renegade feeling that it might give you. Let me see if there's a post about it in the subreddit and see what people said there. The top comment says, I'll put it this way, it sounds exactly like you'd think a song by Brantley, Gilbert, Hardy, and Toby Keith would sound like. Man, this is such a deep and complex satire that it almost needed a disclaimer at the end. You know, like when seven-year-olds shout not in your face, so you know they've been doing the opposites thing. I'll be honest and say this song is not a total flop for me. It's not a serious song for me either, and I don't really like it. With that said, there's just something like a lighthearted fun joke thing where they turn some stereotypically frequently used country lyrics upside down. Nothing to be taken too seriously. So far, that's the one I agree with the most. Okay, this one says, unironically, I love it. Another one says, hot take, I think it's hilarious and I've listened to it three times in a row. I like it too. I think people that are up in arms acting like this is terrible are no fun at parties. What does that make me? Kind of fun at parties? <laughs> Here's what I do at parties. I go sit in a corner, truly, and I just like post up there and I just wait for a few people to come talk to me so I can have a smaller circle and then I have fun. Okay, next up is Walker Hayes' Fancy Like, a song that I have only heard like the same chorus 30 seconds of on TikTok 800 yeah, times. Fancy like apple bees on a date night. Where it's like, and we fancy like apple bees and da da da. Um, at some point, there's an Alabama shake. You know, look, I cannot believe Walker Hayes has another smash hit. I really was starting to not believe it was going to happen after his stirring speech around uh, Crash My Heart. This song is all about fun, having a good time, positive uh, feelings, nothing but bops, uh, good beats, and that's all I focused on. After the flop of 90s country. Million songs I could list you, but I'm just gonna shut up and kiss you. And then after discovering his early career with songs like Pants. Well, she can wear the pants, yeah. Long as I could take them off her. I really thought that we were gonna have a life where Walker Hayes' only big hit single was You Broke Up With Me. Surfing a room like Swayze. You no, know, I ain't drunk, I'm amazed. But no, he has had a smash hit, and this thing is a freaking smash hit. And so let's listen to it overall. I still haven't listened to Walker Hayes' EP, although a lot of you guys DM me about the song with Lori McKenna called Briefcase. So I'm gonna see if there's a video for this and watch that. Okay, so what is there to say about this song? I already said I'm surprised it happened, but it happened. I mean, he is dancing with his many, many, many children on TikTok and getting all the credit for being like a hot dad that's better at dancing than his children. Um, and, and you know, more power to you, Walker Hayes. So I see on here that one of Doja Cat's producers, Cameron Bartolini, is one of the songwriters here, along with uh, Shane Stevens, and then you've got Joshua Jenkins, who's the lead singer of Green River Ordinance, which is like a kind of big band that you might've heard of, kind of getting kicked off the chart years ago because they weren't part of the system. But he's the other writer on it, as is Walker Hayes. And I don't know, I'm trying to figure out, like if I heard this song sung by Green River Ordinance, would I think it was just charming and hilarious about going to Applebee's and ordering their bourbon steak with the Oreo shake and then drinking Natty out of a styrofoam cup? I might, but I kind of feel like just the whole visualization of like Walker Hayes in his Air Jordans sitting behind a John Deere tractor and singing about having skull in his lip just feels like cosplay. But there is definitely a natural charm in the lyrics that's saying like, normally me and my girl would go get Wendy's, but when I've gotten paid and I got new jeans on and she's got Victoria's Secret on, we're going to Applebee's. I mean, it sort of feels like a low key Applebee's commercial. If they're not somehow paying for this, you know, good work just getting a free commercial. The track is absolutely a pop track. It has just got thumping, thick bass and percussion. And I have always said, and I will always say, that for me, that is where stuff goes from being country to being pop, it is like that amount of bass, that amount of percussion that just takes it completely out of the realm of simple instrumentation. But it is damn catchy, and that little electric guitar line that goes through it is pretty brilliant. It's very catchy. Bow, bow, now, now, bow, now. Like that goes all through the song. Yeah, that's memorable. But I don't know, it's so annoying to be the authenticity police as a critic, but you gotta believe people when you hear them sing something. Country kisses on my lips without scowling. Walker Hayes puts out these songs like Craig, where clearly there's this deeper side to him, and then he puts out stuff like 
Crash My Heart, where he has been very open in saying like, yeah, this isn't really about the words, it's just about a vibe. And that leaves me as a listener sometimes feeling hollow, but look, maybe I just need to do the TikTok dance and then I would like it more. So far, a lot of people with a lot of money singing about not having a lot of money in this video. But to be fair, do we want country stars singing about how rich they are? No, no. So you can't win, you can't win with a critic. I'm sure there was a bigger thread about it, but I can't find it right now on the subreddit. This one just says, I'm real sorry to Walker Hayes' country stuff. That was his last song. I was too harsh. Walker Hayes' fancy like is 10 times worse. There's a response that says, I know you're not supposed to listen to music with your eyes and physical appearance doesn't matter, but Walker Hayes' jawline and cheekbones scare the shit out of me. That guy's got a strong jaw. He's got a strong jaw. This guy says, for Walker Hayes, it's gotten to the point where he does mostly bad songs besides for like one bright spot. The bright spot on this new record is Briefcase. That song is fantastic in my opinion, but again, is buried in 10 pounds of shit. <laughs> I'm sure there's a nicer thread somewhere in here. So fancy like, I feel like just in terms of kind of being charming, you know, I'm gonna give it like a six and a half, but you gotta get your standard, why is this in country music, two point deduction. So it goes down to a four and a half. So currently we got a worst country song of all time with a five and fancy like with a four and a half. Also, I don't know who needs to know about this, but allrecipes.com did perhaps the weirdest promotion I've ever seen of Walker Hayes decorating a cookie as himself and then animating the cookie to sing one of his songs that he sings a cappella. It's very strange. I'll just put a clip here. I found it while I just found it. Look, don't don't shoot the messenger. Have you ever seen a cookie nose this good? Maybe I'm not supposed to be a country singer. Maybe I'm supposed to be a cookie decorator. I'm gonna let my cookie sing a little bit of the chorus of Don't Let Her. She don't give two cents about money, like a little coffee in her honey. Let her sleep. I'm sorry for showing you this scary Walker Hayes cookie video, but this is immediately one of my new favorite things on the internet. But now let's go ahead and listen to Where the Country Girls At by Trace Adkins, Luke Bryan, and Pitbull. My hopes are not high. When I revisited uh, Trace Adkins' career for my super weird country music video, I just really remembered like this guy's always been into gimmicks. Always. Like from Chrome. It's Chrome. To Brown Chicken Brown Cow. Singing Brown Chicken Brown Cow. To honky tonk, but donk a donk. Honk a donk, but donk a donk. He's kind of shameless, and so I'm not expecting much from where the country girl's at, but let's check it out. Where my country girls at? Mr. Worldwide. Oh no. <laughs> okay. There are two things I like about that song. One is Trace Adkins it has a very deep voice and at the end, that's kind of interesting. There's also a fiddle in it, that's interesting. Otherwise, that song is trash and the only song in this video that might have a legitimate claim to the worst country song of all time. Who asked for this? And what, Luke Bryan and Pitbull, they're successful artists. I mean, they're doing very well to this day. What did Trace Adkins have on them that they had to be on this track with him? I mean, this song sounds a lot like Boys Round Here to me. Talking about girls, talking about trucks. Where the country girls at, where they gonna be? It gives me that exact same era vibe. It really feels straight out of 2013, just like a really stupid bro country song about girls just shaking that booty and their Daisy Dukes and them legs swinging off the back of your truck. And like, Trace Atkins is 59 and he wants to get in the middle of all these dimes from Tallahassee. It's just so trashy and stupid. What, what's the word I hated? Oh, I got that smell good on. I'll just call it cologne. And Pitbull's rap, I was like, okay, Pitbull, at least bring us something interesting in your rap. He just describes where he is. I'm at the NASCAR Epicenter, Daytona 500, Grand Marshall Track House representing, white cones at the stage, I'm in the suite next to the greatest of all time, baby, MJ, 23, so next to where Michael Jordan would be. Um, Blake Shelton, Tim McGraw, show me love, Trace Adkins, Pitbull, Luke Bryan, throw him up. That's the first 75% of his rap. And then he says, now where my country girls at with their Daisy Dukes, cowboy boots and their cowboy hats. I said, where my country girls at with their Daisy Dukes, Daisy Dukes, cowboy boots and their cowboy hats. 
I mean, wow. I know where Pitbull is, but he doesn't know where the country girls are. That's all his rap is. And look, Pitbull has been trying real hard to get his foot in the country music space. There's that weird song with Blake Shelton called Get Ready. He collaborated with Jared Neiman on I Could Drink To That All Night, the remix. One thing's to show, make one drink all night. He had a song on one of Keith Urban's albums, which was a bellwether of the uh, terrible version of Keith Urban we have now. And then obviously Timber, his song with Kesha, it might be the countryest of all those songs. Timber's a jam. And at least it has a harmonica in it. So that song gets like a two out of 10, but I would give it plus one maybe for having a fiddle in it. So three out of 10, it is the victor or loser of this video, depending on how you look at it. Those are just like a, a weird little single smackdown. Let me know what you thought of these songs. And um, yeah, that's it for me. I'm gonna try and do a video every single day this week. I'm so tired of just doing one video a week. So I gotta just smack myself across the face and try and do five videos this week. So enjoy, love y'all, bye.